Welcome to Sports World USA. Every week, our hosts present a fun and informative dive into the world of sports memorabilia. Join radio legend Mikey Adams and the owner of the largest, most established sports memorabilia store in New England, Phil Castanetti, as they take you through the world of card collecting, collectible autographs, and all things sports memorabilia. You have questions? Phil has answers. You want to find an exclusive item? Phil will find it. You want to buy the items on display during the show? They will sell it to you. Get your bidding fingers ready. Here's Mikey and Phil. <laughs> That's right. And who better to take you through a program like this every Sunday morning? Uh, but Phil Castanetti, the the Massachusetts mogul of collectible sports memorabilia. How's that for an intro? Sounds good. Not bad, huh? Uh, and both uh, Phil and I are fa- fans of the late, great Dick Raditz. That's why I wore this shirt. I'm going to spin around here. Can everybody see that? Dick Raditz. Boy, he had a low voice, didn't he? He was a basso profundo. We've got Mickey Mantle sitting down here uh, uh, amongst our feet. Now, Mickey Mantle is uh, Phil's dog. And Phil, of course, as a Yankee fan, uh, you know, uh, named his dog after Mickey Mantle. What was wrong with uh, you know Hector Lopez? You couldn't name him Hector. <laughs> nah, that didn't just <laughs> didn't seem to fit. <clears throat> now, if you had a white dog, you call him Whitey Ford, you know, or something no. like that. So I named my I had a, a white Ford Fusion, and I named it Whitey Whitey Ford. You know, I, I don't know why we're <laughs> talking about this. We got more important stuff to talk about. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Store's busy, I hear. It's been very busy. Good. I mean, through all this craziness out here, that uh, you know. Just people aren't working, got some money. There's no sports to spend your money on. So Yeah, they need their fix. They, yeah, and they, it, we've just been so busy. It's, it's, it's awesome. Phil is, of course, maybe the best person to ever talk to about an opinion on the value of whatever sports memorabilia you might have at home because people are always curious about that. In fact, I brought in a piece that I'm going to ask you about myself uh, because establishing a value and having stuff uh, certified – it's really a big f- part of the process. It, this is a little... I just got to show this to everybody right here. This I got at Phil Castanetti Sports World Store, certified, signed by Johnny Vandermeer. Now, Johnny Vandermeer is an old guy. He's, he's, no, he's passed away. Got long gone. Yeah, long gone and hard to find. But he pitched in like the 30s or something, wasn't it? 30s, 40s. Yeah. Johnny Vandermeer holds a record. Says, Am I holding this in the right place? <laughs> ben Kitchen goes, gives me the thumbs up. That's good. Um, this certificate of authenticity signed by Johnny Vandermeer. Johnny Vandermeer pitched consecutive no-hitters. Now, I was mentioning to you guys before the show started, that's a record that will never be broken because in order to break Johnny Vandermeer's record of two no-hitters, you have to pitch three. And that'll never, never, ever, ever happen in Major League history. So I got this, and I'm, I'm going to get a, oops, I'm going to get a frame for this, and I'm going to uh, put it up in my baseball den. But as you know, Johnny, again, an autograph you can't get. No, he, he wasn't. Uh, you know, he was kind of gone before the craze took over. So he, that's a pretty good autograph. That's a really nice one. I got some good ones too. And the guys that passed up, it's just Dan Musial. I, you know, I wanted to get him before. They were all gone because Stan Musial, in my, in my view, is one of the top five players of all time. I agree. Really, really good. Um, we're going to be opening some 1988 Big Tops baseball cards. I want to put it right here so you can have a look at the packs. I'm hoping to get a Mark McGuire because this is before we knew he did steroids. <laughs> right, 88? This is when he was first fresh. He was very fresh. Yeah, and, and Canseco was juicing like a dog, wasn't he? He got the whole team going. Yeah, in 1988, it was like, you know, you know, injections in the butt and huge muscles and the Bash brothers and the arm, you know, blasting each other on the arms as they came around home plate. Mark McGuire had, in his rookie year, 87, had, what, 49 home runs, the all-time record for a rookie. At that time, yeah. There's not been a rookie that broke that. Yes, though. there's been two. Who? Aaron Judge a few years ago. Oh, he broke it. He broke 49? And Pete Alonso broke his record last year. Oh, see, I really should wake up and smell the coffee. You know, honest to God. I, that's right. That's still, that's So that's no longer the record. Good. I'd rather have Aaron Judge have it than uh, than Mark, Mark McGuire. Well, Aaron Judge doesn't have it. 
I but just well, said yeah. Pete Alonso but broke he had his it for, record. I, I know. You pay attention. <laughs> but he had it for a year, though. <laughs> so someone took it away from him. I, now, do you trust these current uh, stats and these current players to not be juicing? No. You don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Phil's never anything but honest. He can't help it. He's got to <laughs> tell you the truth. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, God. Why just, why just wake up, you know. <sighs> I don't even smoke anymore. Um what is the hottest commodity going right now? The card boxes, especially basketball. I mean, for really, it's just it, it's it's amazing. I you know I get them in, they're gone. I have people waiting for me to call them because he just can't he just can't get it. Any particular strain of cards? Is it's it just the newest stuff? It's called optic, and there's prism. And yeah, Panini makes some great basketball cards and. Man. Everyone's going after because you know there was rookies. a pecking order for cards in the old days where it was all baseball mostly, and secondary to that would be the hockey and the football and the basketball. But they weren't they were sub sub industries really compared to baseball, right? At the time, now you're saying basketball has moved into the foreground. Right now, it's there's, I've never seen all the years I've been doing this anything so hot. Really, that's yeah, crazy. And you're stocked at Sports World with the uh, basketball. Cards? I have none. Was, like I said, when they come in, they're gone. Oh, I see. I can't get enough to. Well, wait, can you get some more? I will get more, but <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. the luck of the draw. It's right when they now. come in, you know, you have them, and you know, so people should stay in touch with you guys if that's what they're interested in. Give a call down to Sports World at six one seven. No seven eight one. Oh, that's what I meant. Seven eight one. It's two 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 two. No, you, let me do this. Okay. Seven eight one two three three seven two two two. Okay. Yeah. Two three three seven two. See, I got it on my phone. I just go call Sports World uh, Siri. <laughs> and she goes, "I'm busy." <laughs> um, so I have an, another thing I want to ask you about. But you have give, give me some of the stuff you brought in here because oh. the thing about Sports World, okay, is that they have how many thousands of autographs do you have? Do you have any idea? Probably tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of, of, of bona fide certified autographs yeah. from famous people, including these Bruins. And this here. is one of the ones we just finished up a couple weeks ago. Let me see if I can. This is the 70 Stanley Cup Bruins. Nice. Fully loaded. I've worked on this for probably five or six years. Getting everybody to sign it. Yeah, yeah. certain times and, you know, bringing them in, going to their houses and finding out where they are on a given day. And so Bobby Orr did a private signing a few weeks ago, and he finished them all up for us. Beautiful, that's a beautiful. It's a great print. Oh yeah, and it's a, it, the the picture's awesome by just by itself. I mean, yeah. You could hang that in your den oh, yeah. without the signatures, but with the signatures, it makes it like it takes it to a whole new level. And now there's there's already a couple of these guys are gone since I started this. Gary Doak and yeah. Johnny McKenzie. So there's never going to be another print like this done that's because they just can't that is so awesome yeah that that is a really nice piece i'll just i'll just put that in my trunk <laughs> that's a great one and you're a huge hockey fan i love the old bruins you, i mean that yeah. was the era and yeah i mean did you go to a lot of games as a young man i did yeah my father took me to a you know celtics more celtics than, than bruins back then yeah but, but the old garden, you know, I mean, it's uh, that's magic. And then, especially when you got something like that, uh, the the hardcore Bruins fans, and they are hardcore, most of them, almost all of them. Uh, that's what makes Boston such a great hockey town is that the fans have been rooted into that team through hell and high water, uh, and that's the team that they think of first when they think. Oh, of, absolutely! You know, that's the magical team. You know, that's the one. You know, and they stuck together. They didn't get traded and free agents and they didn't come and go like right. they do now and you know these guys are together for years and years and i hate the the you know i understand people want to make money but i i i wanted to know how much you think that sports has changed when you can't maintain loyalty to a player because he's going to be leaving in three or four years and he's going to go for the money i mean mookie's a great example we all love mookie he's a great player i mean he's an mvp he's a, he's a guy we all love watching him play but, uh, you know, he's going to disappear as soon as big money comes around, and that's what the Dodgers did. Yeah, it's awful. I mean, it's just all about the money now, and there is no loyalty on either side, though, either. So Yeah. I'm just I – don't, I don't – I think that in the old days, you knew, okay, all the Tigers, they got Norm Cash, and they got Willie Horton, and they got Denny McClain, and they've – you know, Al Kaline. Now you say, well, who's on the Tigers? You don't know. It's yeah. like because they're gone in three or four years. Yeah. Daryl Strawberry. Jack Clark, wearing a Yankee uniform. He sucked. 
And not just in a Yankee uniform. He was uh, really bad in a Red Sox uniform. Rob Saka is asking in the chat right now, how much was that Bruins team signed photo? It's a limited edition of 50, and we sell them for 1200 It's got everybody on it. Peter Kelly also chimed in from the chat and said, I bought one. Well worth the money. He did. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the signatures, it's on there. And it, as you said, some of them you can't get anymore. And just try. And, it and took you a lot of time just to get them together to took, sign. Yeah, he has. And then Bob Yaw, a couple of weeks ago, said he's not signing any more team photos. So wow. this will be the last of the last there is. I got Jim Rice. Jim Ed Rice. Now watch. This is what I'm going to tell you. Jim Rice, born March 8th, 1953, Andersonville, South Carolina. And uh, he hit 309 with 22 homers in his in his rookie year. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm talking about. Jim Ed's funny. He pulled up to uh, uh, Bill Lee and I when we were playing in a golf tournament, charity golf tournament. Up here comes a golf cart, Jim Rice. He goes, "You guys smoking that funny stuff?" <laughs> That's a funny thing. I, I said, talked to Bill Lee yesterday. As a matter of fact. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I got to give him a call. I, he, what's going on with him? He's just up in Vermont and uh, staying tapping maple syrup and making bats. No, we got no more baseball. We got checklist. Mike, you moved the cards a little too. Oh, sorry. Left. Yeah, there right there. Lenny Dykstra. He didn't do any steroids though. He's crazy. Dick Schofield, not to be confused with his dad, Ducky Schofield, and uh, Sam Horn. Are you kidding me? I believe that's a Sam Horn rookie <laughs> card. Well, let's keep it then. There you go. Sam Horn's rookie. Now, can I? Is there a way I can get a camera shot on this? Yeah. Okay, this this one, Phil. We got to just take a look at this here. And where can I put it? Right here. Yep, right there. Okay. Sports World, of course, is your registered logo, which was stolen by New England Cable News to, to was, name my yep. show. Unbeknownst to me, we were stomping on your you know your personal property. <clears throat> but the show was called Sports World on on NECN. It ran from 1992 to 1998. We won three Emmys. <laughs> I'm laughing about that because how do, how did I win an Emmy? <laughs> You know, I got a Best of Boston Sports Anchor Award over Bob Lobel. That was so fixed. <laughs> God, how'd that happen? How much did NECN pay for that? Hey, I'm, that's a good question. So this was signed by many of the, and many of them we forgot to have them sign. Like when I had the cast of The Love Boat in, I forgot to have them sign. I had Kent McCord and Martin Milner from Adam 12. Really? They came in. They didn't sign because I forgot. Robert Vaughn, the man from Uncle, all these people, The Rock, they, I forgot to have them sign. But we still have a, this thing is packed, as you can see. I'm going to name some, and then you can give me an assessment of this value of this entire thing. Ready? Roger Kahn, Russ Francis, um, Mike Greenwell, uh, Vinny Pazienza, Walt Hazard, Jerry Cheevers, he's on yours too, Walter Payton, Gail Sayers, Joe Morgan, Bob Ryan, isn't he a writer? Dick Raditz. I'm wearing his shirt. Uh, the first, the first major league umpire who was a, the first umpire who was a woman. She up to the minors. Pam Postema, Bill Buckner. Uh, uh, I can't even see over Is that. that Bobby Orr in the far right. Yeah, Bobby Orr. Corner? Yeah, Dave Cowens. Um, AC Earl. You're never going to get his baby. autograph again. He's hiding, and I don't blame him. He's hiding out of embarrassment. Jerry Sixting. Uh, Herb Crean, uh, Tommy Heinsohn, Gino Capaletti. Uh, I'm trying to pick out some. How about the good one right here, Walter Payton? Walter Payton, yeah, the sweetness. He signed it, sweetness. Rick Patino, do we want that? Um, <laughs> uh, but there's a whole bunch of them on here. Let me see if, if there's anybody I missed that was a big name. I don't know, Steve Grogan. What do you think this whole thing would be worth with all these signatures? I mean, to the right person, you're talking a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks, Ben. I want all hundreds. All right, I guess I'm the right person. <laughs> yeah, that's a personal. I'm not going to sell this because it's personal uh, memento of my of my uh, my TV career, which is, as you can see by looking on your television screen, it's long over. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's what we got. But we got some pretty weird ones in there too. You know, I don't know if anybody would want to uh, pass it up with Jimmy Myers on here. Where is Jimmy Myers, anyway? Wherever he is, I bet you he's still angry. Nah, uh, he's not a bad guy. No, I know. <laughs> I know Jimmy, but he gets mad easy, doesn't he? Yeah. He gets frustrated and mad. Uh, and so, the, you know, I'm curious about that because I'm not going to sell that. But I just, you, you always wonder what things are worth when you have them. You're just out of curiosity. Yeah, and something so, you know, different like that with all those names and... 
bizarre it, names. Yeah. yeah. Now it would definitely go up in value if I had the rock on there. You know. If you play your cards right, I can have that done. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go talk to the Sibby family. That's all. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Who's Mark Bailey? When did he play? All Don right. Mattingly. A little lower, Mikey, so we can see. Oh, him. sorry. I'm not very good at this hand modeling stuff. Don Mattingly, put him with Jim Rice because he should be in the Hall of Fame. Tim Laudner, Luis Rivera. You remember him on the Red Sox? This is him when he was on the Expos. Jody Reed, uh, Rene Gonzalez. I wonder how he got away with having that name in baseball. Rene. Doesn't sound right, does it? No. That's a sound. Just walk away, Renee. Show me uh, some, of the, some of the other. you got two more out here uh, that uh, Phil Castaneda brought in from the Sports World store. And that number, again, is 781-233-7222. You got it. By the end of this show, I'm going to have it memorized. Eddie Murray, Hall of Famer. What's that big thing? That looks like a newspaper. So this is the 1915 Boston Herald when the Red Sox won the World Series, the original so newspaper. 1915. So it's a 105-year-old newspaper. That's amazing, and it's still in pretty good condition. It's in beautiful and condition. See how they wrote the titles, though? I mean, the uh, headlines back then? Red Sox win title of world champions. Yeah, they didn't do a big thing about it, but <laughs> and this one's a little bit old. This is 1912 when the Sox won. That's even older. So that's a 108-year-old, that's a uh, and that's in fabulous shape. Yeah, the, the newspapers back then, they printed them on better stock. That yep. They didn't yellow and crinkle as And you talk about a broadsheet. Look at how big that is. You open that up, it's like, okay, let's yeah. do some reading here, you know. <laughs> newspapers were newspapers. Now, yeah, now newspapers are, you know, point and click. And uh, it comes up on your screen and you got to scroll through it. I, I, you know, I long for the days of the old newspapers because that was a Sunday morning ritual. Sitting down, spreading it out, reading the entire paper, even the ads. You know, you took three, four hours, had six cups of coffee, you know, maybe five beers. You got ready for the ball game in the afternoon. It's a different world now we're living in, isn't it? It sure is. I went to get a paper the other day with $6 for the Boston Globe, the Sunday Globe. I couldn't believe it. Right. And that's all because Dan Shaughnessy gets five cents per paper. <laughs> um, so what, what do you have in the store that people can come in and look at that are like uh, – you know, I mean, if you want, let's say you want to bring some people in. How about if they were Yankee fans? What do you got for Yankee fan stuff? I have a pretty good assortment of Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio stuff right now. Baseballs and bats, and you, you have know. signed uh, Mickey Mantle. Ba uh, you have a Mickey Mantle bat? Yeah, that's got to be unbelievably expensive. It's a couple thousand bucks. It's yeah. not crazy expensive, but uh, it's, was it was it game used or just no, no, okay, no. okay. Because I was going to say, did he? I was going to say, did he use hit, use it hitting righty or lefty? <laughs> he hit him farther. Another Jack Clark. Can I just? Uh, I don't like Jack Clark. Remember how he used to strike out and then walk back to the dugout like he didn't give a crap, blowing bubbles. He'd have bubble gum all the time. He'd blow bubbles. Well, I so I struck out so. Remember him? What he, a... he could hit him when he hit him though. He had he hit him for Cardinals. He could, but with the Red Sox, he was terrible, wasn't he? I mean, yeah, some of these players, the 80s, Harold Baines, he's in the Hall of Fame. Maybe, maybe he doesn't be. deserve to be, but hey, Mark McGuire. Hey, we got a Mark Mc... How do you say this in a Boston accent? Look at this. It's a card from Mark McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm covering all the bases here. Or as Ted Kennedy would say, Mike McGuire. Mike McGuire. Sammy yeah. Sousa. Yeah. So um, you have Yankee stuff. What would be a nice item for... Let, let's do it by price range. If someone came into the, the Sports World store... On Route 1 South in Saugus, Massachusetts, and said, Phil, I need something for my dad uh, in the $100 range, which is very reasonable. What would you, what would you suggest for that person? You know, I, I, I kind of got to feel them out to see what sport and what they like, you know, who they like, how old they are. But right. I can usually tell if someone's looking for a gift for a father, you know, find out his age first, right. and then I can right. kind of gauge What's it from there. What's his wheelhouse, so, so, yeah. To, yeah, so to speak. But Kalia Sremsky is pretty hot, and he's still in the $100 range. Yeah, for a signed? You know, for like a baseball, a, yeah. you know, batch a little bit more money, but. What's the most expensive signed baseball you ever sold at the Sports World store? Wow. I always like these questions, because, um, you know, he's had he's only been there 30, how many, 30, how many 35 years? 35 in February. So you started when you were eight? Yeah. Good, good for Just you. Just turned eight. You're lying. <laughs> um, 
I sold a Babe Ruth ball a couple of years ago for 30000 That was probably the most I got for a baseball ever. Babe Ruth. Yeah, it was a beauty. Was it like old and yellow? No, it was pristine, nice white. The guy had it in an old sock. He said, I've never, I've had it for years and years and years. And obviously it was a clean sock. Because it was, you know, yeah. came, came out of the soccer. But, but what do you suggest if you have, okay, let's say you get your favorite player to sign a ball. Yeah. You don't want that signature to fade. You don't want the ball to yellow. What do you do? You just can't get it in any kind of sunlight or, you know, any kind of direct light from lights or sunlight. Or you can't leave you just, it in the you light. You just can't, no. And you've got to try to get a UV, you know, a UV protected case. So, you know, whatever does get on it, that kind of yeah. blocks it. So. Uh, because that's a that's an important question. Because I have a couple of baseballs, and so does Ben, that that have gone, you know, a lot on the yellow side. It just happens. Yeah, I guess, you know what it is? That's the leather of the baseball. Some of the leather is is softer than others, yeah. and it it absorbs the ink. Okay. More, and, and then you know that's just the oil of the leather that's making it makes it and, yellow. And if the signature's fading, I mean, sometimes they do them in the right pen. You know, it's a nice dark you know, ballpoint pen or something like that. But sometimes they do them and, it, and it's just like eventually you can barely make yeah. it out. There's nothing. Yeah, to, we have stuff do. in the store that like if we sign with the wrong pen after a few years, it starts fading. We just have to get rid of stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a shame. Yeah. How difficult is it to authenticate uh, signatures from guys that have been long past? Like you, you bring up Babe Ruth. I mean, that's going to be a difficult process, right? No, nah, not really. I mean, the older guys are easier than the newer guys because they wrote their names and they took their time and you could read it. Nowadays, it's scribbles. Mm. I mean, you right, got to yeah. see the like the Bruins or the hockey players and the, the <laughs> basketball. They just do this. It's, yeah. it's nuts. In and out quick. Just lines. Yeah, it Dustin means Pedroia's nothing. autographs are stupid. It doesn't yes. even look like Dustin oh, And they're all like that. There's not. I mean, there's probably a handful of players that, that actually, you can actually read their names. Right, right. Cause it's like Taco Fall that plays for the Celtics now has a great signature. He does. Great. He's like the only Is one. Is it really that, tall letters? <laughs> just the T. <tea. laughs> <laughs> T T for tall taco. That's yeah, that's great. But you know, you're right. They took pride in their signatures back then. Yeah, and it's easier know. to you know to authenticate them because yeah, you know you, you could actually read them. Now, is there anybody that ever see? We got this card right here, Rick Russell. Can you see that? Rick Russell was a big fat bag of smash. He was a. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. He was a big, giant, fat. In fact, now I understand he's put on so much weight that when he eats, he needs to, a bookmark to, to mark which one's his mouth because there's all these chins under there. You know, Has anyone ever come in and asked, asked for a Rick Rushell autograph? No. Okay, good. I'm just making sure. <laughs> so you don't mind if I take that card then. Uh, <laughs> um, who's, who's the hottest right now baseball-wise? Mike Trout, of course. Okay, yeah. We, yeah, we actually, Corey said that too. Same thing with the cards. Yeah. Mike, but who's second? You know what? Um, there's Toronto has three young players, you know, Guerrero, Guerrero's Biggio, kid, yeah. and uh, Bichette. They're pretty hot. Ro- Ronald Acuna for Atlanta is real, real hot. Yeah. He's going to be a great player. So, so those are some of the fresh, fresh, uh, you, you know, guys coming up through. Uh, is there anybody established star wise who's uh, leading the pack aside from Trout? Oh, look at another Jim Red Rice. See, this is what happens when you have multiple packs. You get some doubles. I like doubles. Trout is by far the, you know, the hottest one. Mookie. He left teams now, so I mean, he was more New England than yeah. the nationwide. Yeah. Although the Dodgers, you know, by the way, he made a big mistake, I think, because I don't know what the contract's going to look like when this whole COVID thing ends and baseball comes back. He's not. He's going to lose a lot of money. Got to. Has to. There's no, no I mean, doubt. We were hearing $30 million a year for him, and, and you know, now it's like, well, what? I don't know. You know, it, I guess it depends on what he does, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean. But he, the end of, he's a free agent at the end of this year, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. How are your Yankees going to be this year? In a short season like this, who knows what can happen? You know, they got to stay healthy. That's the thing that killed them last year. So now, just you mentioned a short season. Uh, let's let's talk the top three shortest baseball players. Not Getty Gaidel, but the top three shortest baseball players in my career in watching watching baseball. I'm gonna go with Freddie Patek. You remember Albie Pearson? Of course, from the Angels. He was five five. Patek was five. Four or five three? I think he was five four. Is there anybody you can think of that's shorter than those two dudes? I mean, I those are the two that come to my mind too. But you know, when you see 
when you when you see Louis Tiant in person, he doesn't look that tall. It's amazing. I mean, he's these shrinking. guys that you know, Louis can't be <laughs> five eight, five nine. I bet. Right. Altuve currently playing is five six. Oh yeah, Altuve. I didn't even think of him. He's and he's a good player when he's when he's wired up. And juiced up. Well, yeah, when he's got the when he's got the you know the buzzer on his chest, taped to his chest. That makes it. Oh, he's pretty good though. He's he's a pretty interesting yeah. guy, and he's a fiery guy, and he's an inspirational player. I'm just worried about the Red Sox this year. I say less than twenty out of sixty games, less than twenty eight, maybe less than twenty victories. I'm going to say eighteen and forty two. Wow. You know why they don't have any pitching? I was just going to say that they have no pitching. They got nothing. Evaldi's going to be their opening day pitcher. He's he's been on the shelf. You know he's been a, a yeah you know, one of these guys. I don't know. I'm I'm concerned in a big way, but we'll we'll wait and see. Meanwhile, we want to tell everybody three things: SportsWorld-USA.com. Right. Did I get that right? Yeah, you got that one right. Call Phil. He's there nine to five almost every single day. He's the expert. He can tell you all, and you can go see him in person on, on Sports World in uh, Saugus on Route 1 South. 87 Broadway. 87 Broadway. And the telephone number is, don't tell me, 781-233-7222. That's it. Ah! Just like Dick Raditz, I'm a closer, and we close this show with that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Phil, good to see you, you again. You too, Mikey. See, see you, you next, next week. week. And- The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.